The California almond industry is committed to continuous improvement, making life better not only by what we grow, but how we grow. Our Almond Board of California supports this effort by funding essential scientific research programs and growers outreach. A key priority area of research and outreach which ABC has funded for decades is in almond rootstocks. Working together with elite researchers, current and future rootstocks are evaluated to ensure that growers have the information and tools available for continued sustainability and success. I'm Kat jarvis -Sheehan. We're out here in rural Yolo County, just a little bit west of Woodland. One of the problems we have out here, which we actually have in hot spots up and down the valley on the west side, is high boron. So really anything above one part per million. Here in this site, we're looking at 1.5 parts per million in both the soil and the water. That's a problem for almond trees because that boron piggybacks on top of the sugars and keeps recirculating in the trees. And that then builds up where those sugars are most utilized. So in the hulls, we get a lot of boron buildup. Then also in the shoots where the growing is, we get a lot of boron buildup. So that's how we get a lot of stick tights when we're in high boron conditions, a lot of dead twigs in high boron conditions. The other problem is that that boron actually will help the sugar water in the pipes of the tree congeal and it'll burst forth because of that backlog at the weakest points. So that might be from the trunk to the scaffold or the primary scaffold to the secondary scaffold. Then you have this big, wet, sugary wound that fungus loves to invade that's right at the heart of the tree. To deal with these high boron conditions, what we're looking for is the right rootstock that'll help us utilize this high boron water and soil so that we can more effectively utilize all our state's water resources. So the right rootstock can act like a bouncer to keep this boron out from getting up into the scion. So we have a number of different options out here that may confer that boron tolerance. We have peach almond hybrids, which generally have a lot of vigor and also have that almond heritage, which confers some tolerance for salts if things are going right. Now we also have a number of Myro plum hybrids out here. These are highly favored in the Sac Valley, because they generally do well with a plum background in heavy soils and with anchorage. Then finally, we have Lovell, which is a pure peach rootstock, which has a long history of being grown in the Sacramento Valley. So this trial was started in 2011. The trees are at a pretty wide spacing. We're at 22 by 18 out here. And 2011 means we're in the 11th leaf of the orchard at this time. We'll talk about three measurements out here yield, tree size, and yield efficiency. Let's start by talking about what's done well out here. Trees with the peach almond hybrids underneath, with the exception of Hansen, have done really well. So we're here at Nichols. You can see nice set, big verdant leaves, even some top growth, a thick interior canopy, a healthy looking tree. As compared with what's done worst out here, level, which we'll get back to in a little bit, but has you know very thin canopy, um, small leaves, a lot of dead wood. Okay, so back to Nichols. Nichols has done really well out here. Peak yields in the top three years of 4,100 pounds per acre, and a very large canopy, as you can see. So that meant it was tied with FXA for the largest canopy size and put together um, high yield and big size meant a high yield efficiency tied with the non-Hansen peach almond hybrids and Viking for highest yield efficiency. Here we have FXA, well, non-Perel on top of FXA, which you can see is also done very well out here. We've got big leaves, nice set, a thick interior canopy, really big trees. Um, the yield on FXA over those peak three years has averaged 3,900 pounds per acre, which is the highest yielding or close second highest yielding depending on the year. You can see the tree size compared with Nichols right next to it, made for a large tree comparable to Nichols. In terms of yield efficiency, was comparable to the other non-Hansen peach almond hybrids or Viking for highest yield efficiency. Here we have trees on Titan SG-1, another peach almond hybrid. As you can see, 
Nice big leaves, good set, good interior fill of the canopy. <clears throat> These trees have averaged 4,200 pounds per acre in those prime production years, which is actually higher than Nichols and FXA, but should be taken with a grain of salt because these were added last minute and they're not as replicated as the rest of the trial. Uh, but I think I can confidently say that yields will be at least as high as Nichols and FXA in a comparable setting. You can see these are also very large trees, though they're slightly smaller than Nichols and FXA. So these came in with a slightly higher yield efficiency than the other peach almond hybrids. Here we have trees that are on Bright's 5. Now you can see Still a pretty decent leaf and set, but slightly smaller leaves and a somewhat thinner interior. Brights 5 has done pretty well out here in those peak prime production years, averaging 3,500 pounds per acre. Um, and, but you can also see when we compare it with the FXA that's right next to it, it's also a somewhat smaller tree, slightly smaller tree. So we have somewhat lower yields than some of the top peach almond hybrids, but also a slightly smaller tree. So when we talk about yield efficiency, those cancel out and we have Bright's five stacking up in the same level as the other peach almond hybrids and Viking in terms of yield efficiency. Here we have our last peach almond hybrid, Hansen 536, which has been the exception to the well-performing peach almond hybrid rule out here. Hansen, you can see there's a good set of the very tips from the new growth, but once you go into the interior, not a lot of set, pretty shabby, thin interior. Hansen has yielded 2,900 pounds per acre out here, which is a quarter lower than the other peach almond hybrids. You can see in comparison with FXA, which is right next door, that the canopies are actually about the same size. So it's not that it's a smaller tree, it's just punching below its weight and yielding lower for the same tree size as these big boys, which means the yield efficiency ranked among the lowest at the whole trial. We've talked through what works really well under these high boron conditions, a lot of these peach almond hybrids. So let's now look at what doesn't do well under high boron conditions. Here we have level under nonpareil, and you can see a lot of classic symptoms of boron toxicity, small leaves, dead wood, thin interior and a lot of that gumming that we saw earlier. Now this is in comparison to the FXA right next door with this nice lush canopy and heavy set. Lovell has performed yield wise half of what these big peach almond hybrids have done. So 1900 pounds per acre in those prime production years. Certainly it is a smaller tree so that has some part in those low yields, but as you can see, this is just not a happy, healthy tree under these boron conditions. So it's when you look at yield efficiency, it's also the lowest yield efficiency at the site. So we've talked about the peach almond hybrids doing really well, and that's if your only concern is boron. But if you're also dealing with heavy soils or concerns about anchorage, you might be looking for something with a plum background. This is Viking here, which is done best of all the plum backgrounds. You can see pretty decent set, set throughout the canopy. Um, it's a little thin this year, but a strong history of um, good fill and good set. The average yields in those three prime production years was 2,800 pounds, which had it tied for second or third, depending on the year in terms of yield. But you can also see that it's a smaller canopy so when we think about yield efficiency, it was actually tied with those peach almond hybrids for yield efficiency. Meaning if you planted these at a closer spacing, especially if you have these concerns about anchorage and heavy soils, you could get very close to having similar per acre yields as those peach almond hybrids at a wider spacing. Here we have trees on Crimps 86, which has done pretty poorly at this trial. It looks all right this year, but you see that the set is actually only on the terminal ends of the branches. When we look at the interior, not a lot of set, not a lot of spur renewal. Crimson 86 has done historically poorly at this site in those three prime production years, only getting 2,300 pounds per acre. Certainly, it is a smaller tree than the peach almond hybrids, but the size alone does not account for those low yields. When we look in terms of yield efficiency, Crimson 86 has ranked on the bottom along with Lovell, Hansen 536, and Root Pack R for lowest yield efficiency. 
Here's our last plum hybrid, Root Pack R, on the bottom here. You can see it actually looks all right at first glance this year. Some good set on the very ends of the branches. But once you look into the inside of the canopy, not a lot of spur renewal, not a lot of renewed set, and a lot of dead branches. Um, this is very similar to Crimps 86. Similar in terms of that thin canopy and not a lot of renewal. Yields on Root Pack R in those prime production years have been 2,300 pounds per acre, same as Crimps 86. Also the size, fairly equivalent to Crimps 86. So in terms of our yield efficiency, it ranks at the bottom along with Lovell, Hansen, and Crimps 86 as the lowest yield efficiency at the site. With 10 years of data so far, this is what we've learned. If boron is your biggest challenge, then peach almond hybrids should do well for you, with the exception of Hansen 536. So that includes Nichols, Brights 5, FXA, and Titan SG1 out here. If you're also concerned about anchorage and heavy soils, so you want some plum background, Viking is your best bet. We'll continue watching things as they evolve in this trial with the support of the Almond Board. If you want to learn more, you can go to almonds.com or the University of California's sacvalleyorchards.com.